Fasting is not always realistic for people. Not everyone can go 12 hours, 14 hours, 16, 18, 24 hours without food. But something that we all can do is get a little bit more disciplined with not eating at all in between any of our meals. So that means even if you're eating three square meals per day, if you can at least be a little bit more disciplined about not eating anything in between those meals, you can see a very dramatic change in your overall body composition. And there's some serious science to back that up. So let's go ahead and let's dive into this. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We're talking new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos as well. So I do wanna make sure that you turn on that little bell button there on your screen. Okay, what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to turn on notifications. So that means every single time I post a live broadcast or any video, you're gonna get a notification so you don't ever miss a beat. So make sure you do that. So let's go ahead and let's drive right into the science. So when we're looking at the time between meals, we have to look at a couple of different things. But the main thing we want to start off with is simple insulin and glucagon. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse here with the whole insulin thing, okay? There's a lot of people out there that'll say that insulin is the end-all be-all when it comes down to fat loss or not losing fat or whatever. The fact is, it does play a big role, but it's more than what we just think. It's, it's more about what happens in between our meals with the lack of insulin versus what happens with insulin. But in order to make some sense of this, I have to describe what happens with insulin. You see, insulin is the absorptive hormone. So what that means is when we consume something, and not just glucose, it happens with protein, and it even happens with fats to some degree, our pancreas secretes insulin, and insulin tells our cells to open up to absorb whatever it is that we're eating. So if we are constantly grazing on something, we're constantly in that absorptive phase. We're simply commanding that the body absorb whatever we're eating. So it turns off enzymatic functions that would normally allow fat burning to occur. Now we have to look at what happens with fat, specifically when insulin is in the equation. Even if our insulin is spiked just a tiny, tiny bit, and I'm literally talking like from one peanut or one almond, just something at all that triggers a little bit of an insulin spike, there is no gradient. It's either on or off. So that one peanut that triggers an insulin spike puts you into absorptive phase the same way that it would be if you were to consume a larger meal. The fact is at that very point in time, you have spiked your insulin. So when we have our insulin spiked and there's fat in the equation, our fat cells absorb the free fatty acids from the fat that we consumed into what's called a vacuole. It's a portion of the fat cell that stores those free fatty acids. So literally, insulin says, hey, fat cell, go ahead and store these fats that are flowing through the bloodstream and put them in that vacuole. So that swells up the fat cell, literally making us fat. So what happens is, when we spike our insulin, fat cells go into storage and glucose gets burned. Again, even if we're consuming something like protein, even if we're not consuming glucose. Okay, so when we know this, it makes some sense of things. But what people don't always understand is that literally all it takes is something very, very small. And we have a pretty consumer mentality these days in the whole world where we just consume things throughout the course of the day. You know, so if we're constantly eating something, even if we feel like we're only eating two or three square meals, but we're actually eating little teeny things in between, we're disrupting this whole process. Just go without eating for a period of time and you will burn more fat. You see, it comes down to the opposite hormone of insulin which is glucagon. Glucagon is released after insulin goes down to its baseline. So for example, if you eat something, then two or three or four hours later, what's gonna happen is insulin's gonna go down and glucagon's gonna go up. And glucagon signals fat breakdown. Glucagon signals hormone-sensitive lipase to do its thing. It signals all of these different processes to start burning energy from our stored sources. And this can only happen if insulin gets back down to baseline. So we have to go a period of time between eating. And if we're going the traditional six meals a day kind of thing, then you're definitely not letting this ever occur. So that's where the big myths end up getting debunked. But there's an even cooler aspect that people don't talk about when it comes down to the time between meals. And that's the effect on your gut bacteria with your cravings and even the gut bacteria link to the genetic predisposition to gaining more fat. Literally, there are forms of gut bacteria that are linked to gaining weight and being overweight in the first place. So we have an interesting process that happens in our intestinal tract in between meals. It's called the migrating motor complex, and it's an electromechanical process that occurs within our intestinal tract. So after one and a half, two and a half hours of not eating, your gut starts this process where it kickstarts motility. Okay, have you ever felt the rumbles in your tummy when you're hungry? Okay, that is this electromechanical process kicking into gear. So literally, when your stomach is growling, it's your intestinal tract speeding up because it's going through this janitorial process of cleaning things up. 
literally. So the excess bacteria that we have that we maybe don't need at all ends up getting flushed out at that point. So like if we have too much of what's called the firmicutes, the bad bacteria that's associated with gaining weight, if we have too much of that, that motility, that electromechanical process during the time of not eating is when that would get flushed out. The second that we consume one single thing, we start the digestive juices and we start that whole process and everything stops in the way of that migrating motor complex. So this migrating motor complex ends up being just as important as the insulin glucagon relationship. So we have to, absolutely have to have periods of time where we don't consume anything other than water, possibly a little tea or black coffee, but we have to have these periods of time. Otherwise, we are constantly triggering the digestive system to do its job and never go into the janitorial cleaning aspect. It's like having so many people working in your office all the time that the janitorial crew never gets a chance to come in and clean up the garbage. It's like literally like that going on in your body. But there's another aspect that we have to look at too, and that's the simple digestion piece. Okay, again, whether it's protein, carbs, or fats, if you consume something and you don't give enough time for that to actually mechanically digest, then your blood sugar is just gonna skyrocket and skyrocket on top of that. So example would be with glucose because it's an easy one to, to really give an analogy with. But you consume glucose and your blood sugar spikes, okay? And then that blood sugar starts to come back down. But then you eat again before that blood sugar gets a chance to really come back down all the way. So you eat again and it kind of bell curves and then it starts to come down a little bit in between meals and then you eat again. So next thing you know, by the end of the day, your blood sugar and your insulin levels are super, super high and you're in this very high absorptive phase where things that you are eating can really be screwing you up, okay? Even if they're really not that bad for you. So it's important to just get very deliberate about the meals that you are eating and when you structure them. And if you're on a ketogenic diet or whether you're intermittent fasting or whatever, you just wanna have a plan so that way you're not deviating from that plan. And when it comes down to getting all the groceries that you want and getting everything at the price that you want, I'm a big fan of Thrive Market. So I make sure that I add them into this mix whenever possible and make sure that I shout them out to my fans and followers because there is a special link down in the description that allows everyone that's watching this video to literally go to Thrive and get my specific bundle. Okay, so whether it's gonna be a keto bundle or a fasting bundle, it's literally things that you can get at the grocery store but I put them with Thrive so that you can get them right to your doorstep. So that's the cool thing with Thrive, is literally you end up saving money because you don't have to go to the grocery store. You can literally get all your stuff online, delivered right to your doorstep, and ends up being cheaper than the grocery store, and you don't have to make a separate trip. So huge thanks to Thrive for making this video possible, but also, really, when it comes down to food, it's a pretty easy intertwinement to add Thrive to the mix. So make sure you check them out down in the description below. Again, special discount for anyone that's watching this video. But I wanna add a study into this video because things are really interesting when you start looking at the science. So there's a study from the journal Diabetologica that took a look at two different groups of subjects. They took a look at 54 patients and they divided them into two groups. Okay, one group consumed six meals per day and one group consumed two meals per day. Okay, they consumed the same amount of calories. Okay, and what they found is that the group that consumed six meals per day ended up losing on average about five pounds and the group that consumed two meals per day, again, the same amount of calories, ended up losing about eight pounds. Okay, the two meal per day group ended up having lower levels of fasted glucose, and they ended up having higher levels of insulin sensitivity. What that means is that when they did eat, they were able to absorb what they were eating better than the group that was eating six meals per day. So really, the science even shows that if you wanna get a better result, you can eat the same amount of calories, but just allocate it into larger meals with larger gaps in between. So, even if you can't fast, even if it's just too hard for you, and even if you're not doing the ketogenic diet, if you're eating three meals per day and you're really, truly not snacking in between and you're allowing these little miniature fasts in between the meals, you're going to have a better result, even if it isn't a caloric issue. It's simply the process of eating something in between that can completely throw you off. So you want to allocate your meals to set times. And again, that's where Thrive comes into place. You want to be able to set your plan for the week, for the day, and have the goods in front of you. So make sure you check out my Thrive box that I've assembled with all my groceries down in the link below. And thank you again for watching this video. If you have ideas for more of them, make sure you put them down in the comment section.